Okay, guys, good morning to this week's Five Property Show. And on the show this morning, we've got James Watson, a property investor, and myself. We are going to be talking about premium lettings and how to attract higher than professionals tenants. That's really what comes down to. Landlords were always asking us how they can make the property more attractive to professional tenants. And no wonder, it's a lucrative market, higher than people who pay a premium rent for a right home. But what exactly do they actually want? You know, that's it, James. What exactly do they want? <laughs> Quite believe that they're looking for the path of least resistance, Jim. They want everything that's not just move in condition, but in a good, good standard. Yeah, and uh, we tend to differ from local authorities as we make sure that there's it's done to a good standard. Uh, yeah, and 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 uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that bandwagon straight away. As you said, that's amazing how many people are actually going about council housing, and then the next minute they say I've got to put my, my new carpets down, I've got to decorate it, I've got to I've got to put my 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 curtains up, I've got to I've got to put white goods in. It's like well, wait a minute, yeah. and we provide all that stuff as standard practice. That's what we do as a Absolutely. base private let that's how we do it i mean professional tenants often work long hours and um, so the, the free time is particularly precious in this uh, in this situation whether they stay at home or entertaining friends they they want to truly savor where they actually live um they're also expected a professionally managed home where they can be sure that they're looked after in that process um with a 24-hour number to call just in case of emergencies yes we do have that number <laughs> <laughs> And no, nobody. Well, mind you, I did get, a, I did get. I tell you what, I did get a call on Christmas Day once, and I remember going out on Christmas Day. Unfortunately, someone had actually sat on the radiator when they'd been on the wall, and it had fallen off the wall, and it had burst, and I basically had to go out on Christmas morning. And they were all sitting round, and somebody piped up and says to me, "And how's your day so far?" <laughs> <laughs> and I just went, Ooh, "I had to bite my lip." <laughs> Right it, now. It, it literally could have been avoided. Um, the reality is, and I'm sitting here at ten o'clock in the morning on Christmas Day, having to deal with you know this situation. Um, but but that's the that's the life of a letting agent, and, and possibly the life of a private landlord, isn't it? You know, it's great to have a letting agent doing it now because I don't have to do that anymore. But being a private landlord is not for the faint-hearted because these Absolutely. Are the things you're expected to do as a result. And, and the problem is, there's a lot of people who go out there and they'll self-manage. And uh, that's fine, you know, if you've maybe got one or two properties, it's not a problem at all. But when you start to grow to a, a scale, then it becomes a bit more problematic. Nobody wants that call at three in the yeah. morning saying, oh, I've got a leak. Oh. It is it is scale, isn't it? And I think, I think uh, the, the self-manage about having one or two and self-managing yourself, I think if you're going to scale, you should just start straight away and actually start getting your letting agent broken into the ways that you want. Um, Absolutely, and, that's what and, I Yeah, and, and I think I think that's the right thing to do in the beginning because when I scaled up and did everything myself, it was difficult to pass on the amount of properties I had and get someone actually to continue with the same sort of level of service I was given. Um, because it was it was relentless for me. It was literally a, a 24 7 job and then some extra hours I could manufacture somehow. I don't know how that's done, but when the moon and the stars and the everything aligns at once. <laughs> Some hours is only part time. <laughs> and if you strip out the whole landlord element of it, you know, primarily we're property investors, and you know, we want to be as passive as we possibly can. So why wouldn't you send, you know, a, have a managing agent looking after your properties for you? Yeah, and 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 at times a precious commodity, as I said, finding a home fast is a priority, which means your buy to let should be listed on all the major property portals and not buried in classified ads. They shouldn't be on Gumtree for a start. Um, that's a crazy thing to do because I'll tell you, Gumtree attracts the wrong type of tenant. They'll certainly not attract a professional tenant. I could guarantee Actually, you that. Gumtree also attracts the wrong kind of landlord. Mm. So if you go into Gumtree and have a look at the Gumtree, there's no EPCs, there's no landlord Absolutely. registration numbers and that sort of thing. So, yeah, always I, I would recommend doing it via letting agent because they're on top of all the current legislation yeah. that's required. I'll say a quick good morning to Kev. Hi, Kev. How are you this morning? Uh, good to see you. Um, listen, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, if you think we're going on the right track and you like what we're saying, give us a big thumbs up as well. If you're not very sure what we're saying, give us a smiley face. It's the only way we'll know that you're actually getting on, you're getting some worth out of what we are doing. The reality is the reason that we're doing this show is so you can get all the information you need 
to consider about whether it's property investing is a journey you want to take or whether you're on your journey already for property investing and whether you can actually gain some golden nuggets and more information about how to do it more professionally and what you should be doing in certain situations all over. Remember, this is a masterclass every single week. All the information is in these blogs and vlogs we do all the time. Our wealth creation show on a Monday night at 6 30 is a classic example of that. This is information that other people will charge you thousands for. And I literally mean thousands, if not tens of thousands. And we are literally giving you this for nothing. All right. Why would we be doing that? Well, at the end of the day, for James, you might joint venture with him eventually because you'll see he's got the knowledge and the skills and the expertise. You might do that with me and you might use our letting agency as a result of that as well because you know what we're talking about and you understand our procedure and our processes. Uh, that's the reason that we're doing it. So, you know, the, just to be upfront about that whole situation. And another thing, we're fully interactive, so don't be afraid to ask questions. <laughs> Absolutely. I love questions because it stimulates a really good conversation and it, and it, and it gives an, a, and I like helping the other person and letting them realise that, you know, it's something extra that you can do in order to make sure that they're okay. If you if you already own a buy to let blog, this is definitely for you this week. Um, it will help you identify improvements which you can make um, to reach a new audience and a new audience is we're talking about in terms of the the tenants that you're you're getting if you're starting expanding lens of portfolio and you find tips on what professional tenants look for in potential homes and locations to pay a premium rent um now when we talk about premium rent we're not talking about out of the out of this world out of this box rent sir with james no i think when we, when we talk about rents in that sort of fashion what we're really saying is if this goes back to the whole thing that Patrick Harvey was saying about uh, things like rent controls and stuff like that. That's all good and well, but you know our properties tend to be of a better specification than local authorities' yeah. housing. So local authority housing is normally very well built. However, we're a bit more responsive when it comes to issues and uh, mm. things. You don't we don't put you on a six week waiting list in order to get a. Uh, see a sagging ceiling. A procedure, eh? It's yes. like, we'll have to follow the procedure. Wait a minute, their boiler's down. It has to be fixed now, uh, but we'll have to get the engineer out. And it's a COVID situation. And, and 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 then it's the weekend. They don't come out the weekends either. And it's like, oh, my God. It's like, what you, you can't expect these people to sit with nothing. Um, Absolutely. have got to have something. And like I was saying, when it comes to things like that, you know, if, if a boiler goes faulty, it's beyond a uh, reasonable repair. I can have a boiler installed the following day. <laughs> that's how that's how quickly we can react to those situations. Yeah. And, and don't hang us by our tongue, by the way, when we say that, because remember, it's all down to the stockists and whether they have all the parts in the boilers. We can often get somebody around the same day straight away, an engineer, but the, the difficulty sometimes is the part for the boiler has to go on back order because they don't have it in stock at that very point in time. So that's why that's the only thing that slows us down in our processes yeah. is things outside of our control that we really can't control at all. Because literally, there's there's only a, there's probably only one or two major warehouses that actually stock all the parts, isn't there? Absolutely. Uh, I think there's probably about three nationally for you know mm. these old back, back boiler systems. It's quite hard to get spare parts for this because there's only three, three locations nationally that actually stock spare parts yeah. if you can get them. And mm -hmm. um, obviously, with things like Brexit and stuff, getting things in for German made boilers is it's not impossible, but it's tricky. Yeah. Uh, and going back to your earlier point about uh, the sort of like for like element, you know, like you said at the start of the show, we supply things like carpets and things. Now, the tenant won't be held responsible for replacing that over time. So we take care of all that sort of stuff. Because it's normal wear and tear, isn't it? So it's included, it's included in the part of the cost of the rent. Um, all these things are included. You know, things like um, things like a new kitchen as well. New kitchens are all wear and tear. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but new kitchens tend to be changed as and when they need change and not as and when a budget comes round and they've got the money to do it. Um, so if it's absolutely necessary, it'll get changed. Um, yeah. And then the, the things like uh, upgrading windows and doors and... And, and all these different things that are necessary in order to make sure and maintain the tenancy. After all, at the end of the day, we want 100% occupancy, don't we? Another thing, the other thing as well is that we, we don't work on a like a 25-year improvement plan, which local authorities tend to do. Yeah. So obviously with uh, things like regular inspections of properties by your agent normally, yeah. uh, we can identify anything that does need an upgrade and, and it'll be done. 
Yeah. So let's go on to talk about things like how to attract hiring and professionals um, and tenants in terms of what you're doing. So location is probably the first one we would identify. Either side of a long and busy day, professional tenants want an easy commute and enjoyable lifestyle that's close to home um, in, a, in a short and perfect work-life balance. Uh, singles, couples and sharers um, are, have an entirely different wish list than families were choosing for their location. Instead of the Ofsted ratings for the best schools, they'd be looking at places to meet up with friends. Um, so when you're considering uh, whether to add a new home to your lettings portfolio, use the following checklist um, uh, to see how the example. So what, what sort of things are we thinking about in the checklist, uh, James? Uh, transport hubs, definitely. So uh, Lever is a classic example. So Lever's about to get its rail upgrade. So that'll open up a lot of opportunities for people to work in uh, Edinburgh. You talk, about that. you talk about that as if it's sometime soon. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's like know, everybody's going, know. oh, no, it's definitely 2023. And I'm like, oh, no, I think it'll be 2025. Well, even if it's 2025, it does yeah. open a gateway to people to Aye, it still opens a gateway for people to work in Edinburgh rather than having to travel all the way to Kirkcaldy and then pick up the, the hub there. Yeah, personally, I, I mean, I commuted to Kirkco uh, to Edinburgh from, from Leaving um, when I was working at Standard Life in George Street. And, uh, you know, it wasn't too bad. Um, you know, you just you bas basically just parked out somewhere in Kirstorf and then got the bus in from there um, in, yeah. one of the, in one of the back streets. Um, so it was ideal that way. And then you just got back out. And the great thing, it was flexible time working at that time. So you were able to you were able to bank and save hours and 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 it worked into all your things. You've got to then measure up whether the cost of travelling is worth the extra money you get for working in Edinburgh. Absolutely, you have to remember you've got to lose three hours of your day just travel. <laughs> yeah, and how valuable is these hours to you? And they're and they're the beginning. It's like wow, you know, I'm working at Standard Life. You know, I've got my own yeah. desk and everything like that. And then after a while, the honeymoon period wears off. I'll have the same one players on George Street as well. Yeah. Uh, I, and there's been word this week about us going back to offices and stuff like that. And it's my whole thing has changed now. Obviously, I'm, I'm yeah. getting quite heavily involved in property. And uh, the focus is off what I'm going to be doing in the sort of next six months in terms of working for an employer. Yeah, well, my mindset was always give your employer the best ever possible service. Um, so so when you hand in your notice and say, look, I'm retiring, I don't need to work for anybody else anymore, I'm financially free, they go, I'm going to miss that guy. They don't actually go, thank God he's going. Um, and that's exactly who I worked on. That's how exactly I was taught as well. Anyway, well, yep. that's wealth creation things that we're talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> that's going into the, the Monday night show. Um, so, you know, we're talking about uh, commuting is definitely what transport hub. Um, places probably where cafes are, are so you can grab a quick coffee, uh, somewhere where you can get a quick lunch or something like that. I mean, it's convenient for me because if I'm wanting a lunch, I'll go down to the golf club or I'll go to Agenda. Um, I'm over in East Nuke. I'll go to one of the local cafes there, the Garigane. I'll go to the waterfront. Um, over in Creel, I've got the Honeypot, you know, all these different places and, and round and about. So it's easy for me um, yeah. uh, in terms of brunch and local food and stuff like that. And um, what else about, What else are you thinking? Uh, access to, to schooling is, is a yeah. big one. Uh, so whether you're a, a busy professional, you know, you're, you're still going to have uh, some access to schooling. And uh, the most convenient sort of school is... Um, general terms uh, is ideal for the, the busy professional you know something yeah. that's quite local and Fife does have some really good quality schools they do they really do I mean you know I, I think uh, I think we play ourselves down a lot um, but I think that's just a general cultural thing in Scotland in terms of we always think we're the poor relation in actual fact we've got a huge amount of skills to offer and a huge amount of um, um, uh, con contribution to what we do you know, after all, the, you know, most of the inventions in the UK are come from Scot from Scottish people. Absolutely. And I think sometimes when you listen to, well, you don't maybe consciously listen to it, but you sometimes see it on the news where uh, parties of all colours sort of do down our education system. And yeah. I think it's, it's probably one of the best ones in the world, to be fair. Yeah. You're not having and, to travel six and miles. And it's free. <laughs> Absolutely. You're not having to travel six miles uh, in either direction like some other countries to get to a reasonable good school yeah Jeanette makes a good point about this location is key building buying in a desirable area with superb transport links with good schooling immaculate presented properties nice kitchens and bathrooms fresh decor smell of new paint 
good quality floor coverings, and most importantly, immaculate clean personal touches and flower pots. Uh, I would agree with that 100%. Um, the, the, I, I often say to myself, um, if I wouldn't live in it, then I wouldn't. I shouldn't expect anybody else to live in it. And That's so right. when I when I do a property, it's like, uh, you know, is it the standard that I would live in myself? I'm not talking about location of that. I'm just talking about in general uh, when I go inside it. And if that is the case, then then absolutely I'm happy renting that um, for that reason because I know the tenant will like it as well. I've got pretty high standards. Absolutely. Go back to Jeanette's point. If she has a look at the show yeah. on Monday, I'm going to give a walkthrough of uh, a latest refurb. Now, it still needs to be painted, but the refurb activity is actually finished. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's just needing a bit of paint. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and we'll look forward to that. Uh, good morning, Jav. How are you? Um, any questions, please feel free to contribute. Um, if you give us a thumbs up if you can, share us if you want, a smiley face if you don't understand. Hopefully, you'll know the procedure um, in terms of what, what to do. Um, so um, uh, local cinemas is still a big thing. You know, um, I, I know a lot of people use Netflix, they use everything like that, but I kind of think, you know, um, the, the time, I, I don't know about you, but it's about 80 quid to go to the cinema. <laughs> Well, it is, but oh. there is also there's also options like that. So if you look for the if you have things like the Kino and 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 Leaving and in Glenrothes and and all the community cinemas, then please use them because at the end of the day, you know that you know the Odeon doesn't need your money. Um, really, it's it's the it's the community cinemas that are probably the most important. The one that I like the most is probably over in St Andrews. The St Andrews uh, cinema is actually really good. I love it. And I used to love that that picture house. I used to stay in Largo Ward many, many years ago. Yeah. And uh, that was, in effect, my local cinema. And it was a great little place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fantastic. I, I love the fact that when you go into the smaller ones, uh, the second cinema and the third cinema, it's almost like being in your living room. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's still, got, it's still got advertising for the circle and the, you know, Aye. all the areas within the cinema. It's like... You can expect a bandy, bandy up here from the centre of the stage and we got the piano. <laughs> Uh, it's great. I love it. Um, so shopping facilities is a big thing as well, regardless of the fact that we've got Amazon, we've got all these online shops. I think shopping yeah. as well. Um, what about any other things you're thinking about? Uh, close to local communities, shops and stuff. Uh, yeah. As you're aware, I, I, I live in Burnt Island and we've, we're lucky. We, we've kind of uh, better places like Kirkcaldy. So Kirkcaldy, if you would take a walk down Kirkcaldy High Street, there's a lot of empty buildings and things. Yeah. Buildings that could ideally look to be repurposed, but we've got a very, very vibrant high street and there's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no vacancies on the high street at the moment. Yeah. And I, but that, that's, that's because I think I think the, the, the bigger places are actually lost in translation, if that makes sense. They don't understand what their proposition is. Um, whereas the smaller village uh, high streets are actually surviving because they're, their 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 customer experience. Um, th that's what they're playing to, and that's the perfect market for them. Whereas the the bigger uh, high street premises, it's the, they're competing against online. Um, you can't compete against online if you're a customer experience because you'll never get that on an online experience. And even big chains, you know, if you go to the Tesco's and Sainsbury's, it doesn't matter where they are in the country, they're all pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. you know, they're not reacting to local needs and stuff. Uh, Swimming pool and gym facilities is a good one as well, I think. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of good places. The mouth pool is really good. I mean, I'd section, I get a, a lane to swim in now um, every yeah. week. So that's perfect for that because it was always classed as a kind of play pool. But the, the lane swimming is actually really good. Um, St Andrews one's really good as well. And Cooper's got a really good one. Um, got over, Burnt Island as well. Yeah, you've got Burnt Island as well. So there's lots of different things. Outdoor facilities as well. Beaches, golf courses. That's a big yeah. thing as well, isn't it? Woodland walks, beaches, uh, we've even got a hill here that you can climb if you really want to. <laughs> you yeah. get a nice view over across to Edinburgh. Yeah, perfect. And also things like takeaway places, uh, you know, there's there's loads and, and there's loads of actually, there's loads of actually um, um, like like uh, tailor-made takeaway agencies that all pop up from their house yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And we've you know, got artisan uh, bakers here as well. Yeah, the artisan places and that. I mean, yeah. you know, they're really good. That's again, that's down to experience. That's down to the customer experience more than anything. And the fact that people know that they've actually there's there's time and effort going into creating what they've done. Um, and that's what the, that's what they like about it. I think that's yeah. it's the it's the emotional response you get from eating it is more than anything. So I think having a full lifestyle doesn't require living in the most expensive streets though. I mean, professional tenants don't prioritize family friend avenues or or, um, or or exclusive positionings. They're looking for convenience and connectivity to enjoy the best in their neighborhood. And, and that's really put it all in a nutshell, hasn't it? Absolutely, yep. 
So accommodation, what, what have we got to say about accommodation? What's your thoughts on this? They want a home that reflects and rewards people on their effort and put their working day. So, you know, so what about accommodation? What, what we're thinking about that? So, like, like you say, uh, earlier on, you know, people want to, when it comes to viewing rented property, they want to know that, that you know, they're going through the path of least resistance. Most of the stuff's already there for them. Yeah. They're not going to have a big outlay, say, £400 for a washing machine or a fridge freezer or whatever. Uh, and everything's there, it's working, good order, uh, mm -hmm. regularly gets tested and so on. Uh, yeah. Plenty of room for things like, I tell you what, a room for a dining table as well is really good. So if you've yeah. got a lounge and it's big enough, then see if you can actually get a dining table in there at some point in time or something that would accommodate that because... Um, I always feel that having just to sit with your tea on your knee um, and is, is not the greatest prospect ever. So if you do have something that will accommodate that in the existing room, the great one is the ex-local authority houses, which are the, and I think you, you, you're you going to talk about one on Monday night, um, the yes. two bedrooms upstairs, and you've got the lounge big enough so the dining room could be at the back and, and the lounge at the front. Um, yep. And these are, these are classic, these are classic templates for actually generating wealth. And, and actually giving a real good quality accommodation to someone, aren't they? Another thing as well, when, when you're having meals at like a like a dining table and stuff like that, it encourages communication because in a world where we're, we're constantly on phones and skimming through Facebook or whatever, we've kind of lost that uh, that art of communicating. Mm -hmm. and, you know, kids thrive in communication with parents and stuff. So yeah, certainly a room for a dining table, absolutely key. Uh, extra bedrooms, full size double bed, make sure it fits in and stuff like that. Extra bedrooms, and obviously, we're in a time of a uh, uh, working from home and stuff. So, if you've got a bit of space, you can devote to maybe a home office or uh, even a corner of a room that you can, you know, uh, attend your team's calls or whatever. Um, it's a big thing, isn't it? I mean, I think it'll still continue, I think it'll be a huge. Uh, pull um, or push to try and get people out of their homes back in the office. I think there's going to be a lot of resistance. Do, yeah, well, pension companies are already looking at that sort of thing because a lot of pensions are involved in property and it's normal commercial office type property and if they're yeah. underutilised then it's affecting everybody effectively through mm -hmm. their pensions. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I think while employers might be pushing to get people back into offices, uh, people are more inclined to want to do sort of hybridised sort of things where you maybe do two days a week in the office and three at home. Mm -hmm. um, the trouble that you've got is that uh, while we're working at home at the moment, uh, there's nobody really there to micromanage you. So getting back in the office is basically justifying a job for micromanagers. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I'm, I would actually say I'm more productive doing what I'm doing at home than I'm actually in the office. And, and, and I'm 100% behind you in that. The time, the time involved in the travel, when you multiply it and compound it up about, you know, if you're traveling to the office and it takes an hour every single day, you're five days a week, you're 40 out 40 weeks in the year. So you're five hours a week, 40 hours in the year. There's, there's, that's 200 hours. Right. So effectively 200 hours and then divide that by just say 40 to make it simple again. That's five weeks worth. That's yep. five weeks worth of working and you're just traveling in your car every single day. So you could avoid that and actually be more productive in what you're doing. Plus the fact that um, if you have to travel in your car, here's a top tip. Mobile university. Listen to audios and podcasts all the time. Stop yep. listening to the radio. <laughs> the news will still happen regardless if you're here or no. So the reality is take the opportunity and make use of that productive time. Could you imagine if you spent a, a, on a, you know five weeks solid on a, on a course? You would be past it by now and it would add to your skill set and add to the value you can create. And you would actually end up probably getting paid more because you're more qualified. Another thing as well in, in relation to, to, to travel is that, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to go towards this sort of green agenda. So mm -hmm. having a couple of hundred people traipsing in Edinburgh every day by car isn't particularly green. And, you know, yeah. we've already proven that, and in the stats gathered by my, the company I work for, uh, how productive we're actually being, and uh, they're quite happy to sacrifice that productivity for getting us back in the office, which is bizarre. It's, well, I know what it's, I know what the reason is because if you don't need the office anymore, then there's no longer rent for a pension fund. Um, yes. that, that's the reality of it. So the the circle has to be that will be broken if that doesn't happen. 
So the sandwich people. shop and the coffee shop starts to suffer as well, obviously. Yeah, and and it's I because the the money doesn't get recirculated in the area and all the rest of it. So there is a there is an economic sense to that, and and it makes sense in in the degree. The offset is obviously for your personal, the you personally that that is obviously not the right decision because then you could be more productive doing other things. But use the time in your car, mobile university. Anyway, we're getting off the point. Um, so if you have a single bedroom, see if you can actually. Maybe it's a stud partition wall. I would actually maybe take the stud partition, move it a wee bit into the double bedroom next door if it is, um, if you can actually do it, and just make a bit bigger the single. Classic is the box rooms, aren't they? Box rooms oh. are classics for that. Um, you can just move it maybe one or two feet into the double bedroom next door um, by creating another another um, uh, stud partition. Um, and, and then you've got a really good size quality um, single bedroom rather than the box room. Absolutely. I was having a discussion yesterday with someone uh, within my team at work and they how they make good money. There's only one income going into the house and they were looking to buy in Bathgate. The Bathgate yes. is, it's not overly expensive, but it might have been a bit of a struggle. And we had this discussion on uh, the box room. So it was a, th a three bedroom, but it was a box room. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said that when I was out in the view and if he knocks that wall, we find out if it's a, if it's a, it's a squatting wall then there might be scope to move that wall. And luckily enough, it is. It's just a stud partition wall. So they move it an extra yeah. couple, of, couple of feet into bedroom two. Bedroom three suddenly becomes a huge room in comparison to what, that, what it was. That's ideal, isn't it? So you can add value in the space and convenience of it. Uh, same with a, with a small bathroom. Um, if, you've got a tiny, if you've got a small bath, really, you'd probably be better um, replacing it with a larger shower. Mm -hmm. um, that would probably be a more convenient thing, right? You know, because small bath, shower over the bath, fair enough. But really, when you're sitting in the bath, you're just going to be cramped. So you'd be better putting a full length shower cubicle in, so people will actually wow, a walk in shower with a proper sliding door, or maybe one of these beautiful ones where you know you've got the shower, um, you've got the shower controls at the beginning, so you didn't need to, you didn't need to <laughs> duck under the shower. We've all done that, haven't we? It's like whoa, quick, put it on and then run away. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What I've, I've got a specific shower room in my office. It's just actually immediately behind me, and yeah. it's no more than a. It's a Jack and Jill room, so it's yeah. no bigger than a telephone box. But that's my shower. But the wife uses a family shower. Mm. But yeah, so, if, you're, if you're limited for space, put in a shower tray. Certainly right. get rid of the bath. And if you have more than three sharers, an extra shower room may receive uh, 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 maybe well relieve a morning rush from people. So possibly if you can create another shower room, if you've got a bigger property, then that would be extremely helpful. Uh, let's, talk about, let's talk about... Even install a downstairs toilet, Jim. Yeah. Uh, well, downstairs toilet is actually perfect as well because, uh, yeah. you know, there's often people just don't want to go in to the toilet at the same time as somebody's actually taking a shower. So exactly. having a separate WC is perfect for that, isn't it? Um, so specification, I mean, professional tenants are happy to rent uh, either new build uh, or traditional homes, but they care about living in a conscious style and modern environment. The place where everything works and makes them sense and makes them feel good about that. So we're going to get on to the specification. So let's talk about decoration. Um, you know, what's, what, what should we do about decoration? So most of our properties uh, are plastered and painted uh -huh. uh, rather than wallpaper because, well, depending how long your wallpaper's up, it can actually screw up walls a bit. And then you're forced down this route of having to put in lining paper and painted lining paper and that sort of stuff. But mines are very fresh. Uh, everything's brand new uh, in terms of the kitchen. New kitchens installed, boilers moved if need be, removal of old uh, back boiler gas systems. Uh, you, know the great thing, you know the great thing I like about the decoration is when what you're doing, the template you're doing is what I'm starting to do as well is, is because if the colour goes out of fashion, you can easily just paint it with another colour. Um, I'm still adamant that Magnolia's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of mine's are done all white, but uh, yeah, I've, I've had that discussion as well. As, can you not introduce a bit of blue, that blue or a bit of grey or whatever? And say, well, it really depends on the room. You don't want yeah. to go into a, see a bathroom that's blue because it, it's immediately going to feel cold. Cold, it immediately <laughs> feels cold. So you need to do a nice warm colour. Um, yeah. I always think in some places uh, white is sterile. Um, it's nice for maybe for halls because it makes it bright because there's no real natural light coming into them. Um, yeah. But then you get you've got the you've got the argument about the scuff marks from it as well. Windows as well. I mean, bare windows are a no no even in unfurnished lettings. Uh, you know. Um, if you're looking for a really professional tenant, you should really choose Venetian uh, timber lines and a burka oak and go with a style. Um, 
a style of property and 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 in with the style of the property and the furniture. Because at the end of the day, if you're looking for a real high quality professional tenant, that's the type of thing they're going to they're going to look yeah. for. Um, bathrooms, good shower um, is absolutely essential. Good water pressure in the shower as well. Um, a long wind extractor fan, it works. It's amazing the amount of properties you walk into and they still don't have an extractor fan in. Um, yeah. And it's because it's got a window, but the reality is not everybody opens a window like you because we always do it. Um, but what happens is then the condensation has to go somewhere. So guess what? As soon as you open the door, it goes right around the house. And, and with then, that, obviously we're, we're all trying to achieve the CPCSC, so we're insulating the houses more and not allowing them the chance to breathe. Mm. And like you say, you start getting uh, darkness, and then you get mold, and you get spores, and before you know it, you're in the newspapers for providing bad accommodation. Like I know, you know, it's like oh, my, my, I've got I've got rising damp, and then when you go around, it's like black spot. <laughs> it's exactly. like that's just, that's condensation. That's because of lack of ventilation in your property. Um, and and please open your windows. And it's like no, but I'll get cold. It's like ah, oh, but you you need some sort of flow of air in order to get rid of the condensation that you're creating from your cooking and from your shower and your bath. And, and, a, classic example that, and a classic example is, uh, is uh, I've got tenants that, well, I've got tenants that had a spare room and they used that spare room because it was uh, facing the sun most of the day and they used it as a drying room with no yeah. ventilation. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, mentally uh, and then 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 if you've got a, if you've got a radiator a standard radiator in your bathroom consider changing it to a chrome radiator it just looks the business uh, yeah. when you see that it's, it's really seductive and it's a cost effective upgrade in the process uh, kitchens uh, were with so much modern life revolving around the kitchen the way it looks and functions is a major deciding factor in choosing a home to rent um it's, it's a myth that professional tenants never cook just let's be honest about that. They want a good-looking kitchen. The, the, you know, a fan, a, a fan oven, uh, a fan. Uh, to me, a fan and oven is probably an essential thing. That it's it's a standard thing. It's not uh, convection ovens are just rubbish. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to fan ovens, I think they're more mainstream now than than uh, yeah. you know the, the, the standard oven. Well, the classic example, you know, in the past, I've always had you know um, people was actually saying, but but my, my food's not cooking properly. Well, that's because you've got it on the bottom shelf. It's not a fan oven, so you have to put it on the top for it to cook properly. Um, and it's like, oh, to hell with it. Just for the extra money, let's put a fan oven in. Um, yeah. Fast hobs as well. I think, personally, for me, it's always gas. Um, gas is so flexible, so controllable. Um, but then there's standard requirements about how you refit a kitchen for the gas. Yeah. It has to be a wee bit wider at the top now for a gas hob um, with the units than it does for an electric hob. So a lot of, a lot of contractors want a, an easy gig. And they want to put electric hobs in, but be aware of that and get a proper gas one in and consult a gas engineer first before you actually do it. So he knows uh, and, and everybody else knows it. The, the, the width of the, the top now has to be a lot wider than just the standard 600 now. Yeah, mine, mine is a 50-50 split in my portfolio. You've got some electric and some gas, but the electric ones are those uh, induction hobs anyway. So they don't actually kick off until you put the pan in the, the thing and they get one really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ideally, what I'd prefer to keep the gas. So if we're, if we're, if we're providing white goods, I mean, it's it's easy to go for a, a higher capacity washing machine now, isn't it? Um, right. And the difference is normal about 20 or 30 quid. So no, why wouldn't you? You know something? I remember buying my first washing machine and it was at the co-op, right? And it was £199 for an Indus 800 spin speed washing machine. Right. Literally. After, and, and that is 1988 or thereabouts. So yep. you're talking about 30 odd year on, it's still 199 quid for a washing machine and better. <laughs> How do you want to do that? I mean, if you want to spend the extra 100 pounds, you know, you'll, you'll get a, a 1200 or a 1400 spin speed. It's got flat, more programs than you would ever need. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, probably handle another, another three kilos of wash on top of what the 199 pound one would be. So sometimes it's worth spending that extra money. Yeah. And you often find that the warranty lasts longer as well. So you'll go for a three-year to a five-year potentially. Mm -hmm. And if you if you need to install a tumble dryer because um, you don't have a garden, you don't have a drying area, because some of the, some properties, um, flats and apartments don't have that, uh, then get, get possibly think about an integrated for space minimization. So you have a washer dryer, but a really good quality one. It'll, it will last and it will pay you dividends to do it because then it will stop the tenants actually drying everything on the radiators. 
Um, so a really good quality one, energy efficient one to keep the bills down for the tenant. Um, and then if you have the option to put a separate tumble dryer in, then make sure it's a condenser. I'm not a big fan of um, um, going outside, you know, the extractors out through the wall. Um, yeah. and, and because I, for some reason, I feel they actually produce a lot more a lot more condensation than the actual condensers do. I think they tend to, they tend to depend on the time of the year. You know, if it's a cold morning, then it's going to produce more and it's going to get drawn out. But if it's a warmer sort of day, yeah, it doesn't escape in quite the same sort of fashion. But then equally make sure if, if it's in the kitchen or if it's in a laundry room, you've got a proper fan. Um, I, we have uh, humidifier fans. So yep. it gets to a certain humidity and the fan will automatically come on to draw that out to make sure that, that there's no there's no problems there. Dishwashers as well. Um, if it's a smaller property, maybe a slimline, 400 dishwasher. If yep. it's a larger property for a bigger family, probably a 600. Yeah, I've um, got a slimline in one of mine. Um, and, and models like, you know, what, what are you thinking now? I mean, Bomatic and that. I mean, you know, Bosch and Siemens. Uh, and that. I mean, they do good quality at good prices now, don't they? I'm sure when it comes, I think I've got a couple of Bosch and a couple of Samsung and so on. But uh, See, Samsung's yeah. really good. I mean, Samsung's a good quality product, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, everybody, everybody goes on and my seat keeps dropping down for some reason. <laughs> um, my um, Samsung are a really good quality product, um, I would say. Um, and, and there's a lot of manufacturers out there now. For example, Hotpoint. They actually make. They have. Um, what's the What's the brand they have? Is it? Um, so Hot Point is interesting because Hot Point Hot is, Point Hot Point. is it no? It's also got Creda, Indesit, yeah. uh, Whirlpool. So it's exactly the same stuff. Yep. So it's it's, yep. it's almost like you know when you go to buy a car, it's like most of the cars like Volkswagen. It's all the same engine that they're using and all the same products. The only Aye. difference is the trimmings and the finishings that you get on it determine the price that you're going to pay for it. And, and in my mindset, it's like go for the go for things like you know, candies are really good quality because that's made by Hot Point. Um, absolutely, and the set of things with them as well. You're exactly right about all the different ones, Creed and stuff like that. They're all Hot Point and Whirlpool. Yeah. Um, so all these top quality brands are now, are now all the lower grade brands or supposedly are now in with them. Well, look at example in cars is Skoda. You know, Skoda yeah. is a really good quality car now, yet it was the butt of all jokes years ago because. It wasn't owned by Volkswagen, and I, I kind of believe how Volkswagen turned that brand around. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, as, as you go up the brands, you, know, you can get yourself. I don't know if it's a Fabia anymore, but you can get one of these small runarounds, or you can go yeah. and then and spend an extra seven, six thousand pounds in the same car, but it's a Volkswagen Golf, or you can go and spend another six thousand above that and go for an Audi A3, and it's exactly the same car. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So we've got a couple of comments here. Uh, morning, Mark. How are you? Um, any questions, please feel free to comment. Uh, if you if you like what we do, give us a thumbs up because it gives us good feedback because we can't interact, obviously, and see what's going on. Um, if, you, if you're not sure what we're saying, uh, do a smiley face and we can cover it in a different way um, just in case. So we understand that you're, uh, we're, 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 not, we're getting the message across or we're not getting the message across. Uh, Alan's actually said, just purchased a condenser dryer from a home. Excellent. No condensation at all. Absolutely. Heather's actually said, I'd, I'd never advise on a washer dryer, had over two years, expensive ones, rubbish, best with high spin rate on your washer. Absolutely. Get a, get a 1400 or 1600 you can, get most of the water out first before you actually do anything because that's where all the cost is going to be involved trying to dry it. You're literally just paying to dry water out of that. i tell you what I use as well. We use a humidifier. So actually, we have a, humi a wee humidifier that we bought out of uh, Argos. We got it online, and we stuck that on at the same time. Just a wee a wee unit. It sits in the, in, in our utility, and it, and it just it just takes all the water out. So it's a classic to use when there's no a sunny day or there's not enough heat to actually dry your clothes when you've got them on. We have a we have a we have a um a, what what they call pulley. We've got a pulley. <laughs> we still use a pulley. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We still, we, you've got, I've got a six foot one. I, th I think it's brilliant. I've had it for years right. and it saves an absolute fortune in, 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 in uh, bills for drying, especially during winter months when you kind of get stuff outside. Yeah. And it literally you just hang them on the pulley. The radiator stays on in the room. The humidifier fan comes on or you put the humidifier just to speed it up if you want it done quicker um, in the process. Um, and, and, and yeah, exactly. Heather, I would agree. Humidifiers are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I spent uh, it on one and it, it, it draws it can draw as much as two liters or something out the out the air, but it never yeah. gets anywhere near full. 
Finally, um, in terms of specification, uh, choose stainless steel appliances when you can. Uh, the kitchen is open to live an open living space. Create a cleaner look uh, uh, for that with integrated models and features to match that um, these units itself. If you want a top tip on cleaning um, uh, stainless steel, baby oil and kitchen roll. That's all you do. Gives it, a, it takes all the blemishes out of it completely, and, 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 and it's a wee cleaner's tip that we've always used for new builds many years ago. I knew about that. So what about floors? Solid wood floors? So a lot of people prefer solid wood floors. Now, there's a number of different sort of floor and styles you can get. You know, you can get all this click sort of stuff and you have to mm. remember to leave room for expansion gaps and stuff like that. But there's also stuff that you can get sort of... Uh, you, you put down like a... Uh, sort of, I don't know what, what the right name is. It's, it's almost like putty, but you have to sort of put it in like you were putting the uh, wall tiles on. Oh, cool. And that's it. Aye, aye, it sits quite yeah. well, uh, and you don't have that whole thing where there's a wee gap around the side, so you don't have to put beading down or whatever else. They're good, they're good, but I think they're a bit more, they're colder. I, yeah. always, I always like a good quality carpet, and if, you, if you're trying to attract a good quality tenant, you want that feel, feel of warmth. Um, there is areas that are quite robust then, that you'd want kind of laminate and top quality wood flooring, um, but it just depends, maybe in a hallway or something like that. But I definitely, yeah. when it comes to a, a living room, and possibly a bedroom, I kind of think that's maybe what I would go for in terms of, I would probably go for carpets more than anything, just personally for myself, what about you? Most of mine are wood floors down the stairs, but then from the sort of stair up, it's carpet throughout. And kitchens, probably tiles, go for tiles, smart grey limestone finishes. Uh, like tiles or, or, or uh, again, we'll go back to the sort of condensation element, but if you've got plaster, then look, as long as the plaster's in good quality, you know, something that just needs a paint now and again, it's quite yeah. easy to refresh a kitchen with, you know, just nothing more than a roller and a tin of paint. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, you, if, if you get a bit fed up with it after two or three years, you don't have to change the whole kitchen, but you just need to just change the colour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's still and, 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 and that's why we like it. The flooring as like, well, if you, get a, if you get a nice neutral floor tile, and, and it's not rugged or anything like that. Um, you know, it's easy enough if you if it really goes out of fashion, actually, to just put a lino right across the top of it because it's yep. not actually it's not actually going to affect the lino at all. It's like another flat surface. So if you really I've want to, if you really want to, don't haul it all up again because it's out of date now. Um, it's easy to put a lino right across the top of it. Um, so that would be my top tips for storage and um, for uh, for floors. Uh, let's talk about storage. Um, it's remarkable how little storage we can find in some of the buy to let properties when there's a huge priority for professional tenants. We have all belongings we need to store, and when there's nowhere for them to go, they end up in piles and make rooms look feel cheap and messy and uninviting. Um, so in, in terms of top tips for storage and homes that stay efficiently tidy, um, what, would, what would we be looking at then? So I think I've got two properties I've got outbuilding. So for things that aren't needed all the time, uh, mm -hmm. There's areas for storage there. Uh, it's just trying to make clever use of the space that you've got. You know, some of these canvas wardrobes are ideal. You know, just horse up one of those. It takes about 10 minutes to make it or something. I like saw, that. I saw some, really, some of these really high, good, good quality kitchens that had actual storage drawers and the kicker boards below. Um, so that's I've seen the, that as well. And, and I've seen them actually installed by Hoover so that when you're, when you're sweeping out the kitchen, you just put it to a, a kickboard and it sucks it all up and <laughs> stores yeah. it. It's that's that's, uh, that's a new take on sweeping the rubbish under the carpet eh, like you saw in Tom and Jerry. Absolutely, but it works, you know, it works. It, it's, it's thinking, it, it's applying smart thinking to everyday's yeah. uh, problems. You're always going to have an ironing board, you're always going to have uh, an iron, you're always going to have broom and mop and towels and all the rest of it. So you yeah. really need somewhere to uh, do something. like So So common areas like hallways and landings and kitchens are the perfect spots for to keep that. So try and keep them out of the living rooms and the bedrooms. That's yeah. uh, that's really for household items. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Another thing yeah. as well is that a lot of these local authority houses that, that you know, we tend, well, I certainly tend to go for anyway because they're normally pretty well built. Uh, normally have air cupboards with gas tanks in them. Well, if you're replacing your boiler anyway, get into the tank and give yourself a cupboard. <laughs> yeah, I, I I would go straight for the... It used to be a case that the condenser boilers uh, were and the combi boilers weren't that great. So people were still opting to have the tank. Um, yeah. And it, it used to be a lazy option, to be to be honest, for engineers. Because it was like, all they needed to do was just change the existing boiler and never, never repipe it. Um, but now, 
now it's it's probably essential actually to get rid of the hot water tank yeah. now and just do instant hot water when you need it. And um, for some of the bigger houses that really want it, there is boilers that will have a fifty liter tank built into them. Yeah. Um, the Alpha boilers, the CB fifties or or CD CD fifties now will have a fifty liter tank built into it. Um, so if you need to run a bath, there's a tank of hot water there straight away, and then it just tops it up as it goes. Again, um, it really depends on the, the size of the property and the demand, yeah. like you say. That's it. And if you've got, I and in the kilowatt of the boiler, if you've got, a, if you've got a house that's got maybe about fifteen or twenty radiators, you're going to need a good, high quality kilowatt boiler um, uh, to to keep up with that demand. And uh, kitchens uh, ensure that there's sufficient space to uh, for storage for food and stuff like that. Make sure there's cupboards if you can above the above the units. It's great to have a nice spacey kitchen, but if you've got a, a maybe a galley style kitchen and it's a three or four bedroom property, you're really going to have to get a lot of space because you're going to have to accommodate a big family for that kitchen. And yeah. so you can't just get away with the postage stamp and just have just the worktops because it all looks nice and bright above and um, without the unit. So you have to make sure you play to your market. Uh, most cupboards will have will take an extra level um, with, a, uh, with an additional shelf as well. So bear that in mind. You do get ones with where you get you get bigger, you get longer cupboards, don't you? Um, for the top, and you, you get, get longer ones. ones. You, also, you also get ones that have like carousels built in, particularly yeah. the corner units. You get carousels so you can move the cupboard around mm. inside the cupboard. <laughs> Aye, um, bathrooms. Everyone has products seen, need somewhere to go. Metal shelves or caddies in the shower. That holds gels and shampoos is probably quite helpful. Mirrored um, medicine cabinet over the wash basin hides every single product. Um, and a tall and slender <laughs> cupboard will allow you to store loo rolls as well, hair dryers, beard trimmers, and everything else. I'll no talk about hair trimmers because it's all gone. <laughs> it wasn't painful, Jim. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that uh, um, the uh, Jeanette's actually said thick underlay gives a luxury feel. Stop to tiling kitchen floors as too many dropped wine bottles. Yeah, chip them, <laughs> and the high end look is completely lost. Use yep. lino instead, and it's easy to change and update. Um, I would, I would agree. Um, it is an occasion where you do get if you are going to have a tiled floor make sure you keep spare ones um, definitely because you can just pop one out and put another one back in um, and make sure the floor is actually tiled on an even floor in the beginning and if it's not even may, you know stick down a bit of hardboard yeah, first, board board top board of first. You, um, and line it first to, to get it properly done because uh, then if you've got hardboard down it's easily to lift it, the, the tiles at the end if you really don't want them and actually just put something straight on top of it but yeah, a, a nice, good quality line, though, not a wheel. Mid, mid range, mid range, no top end, but mid range. A nice cushion to it as well would be good. Um, what type of what type of line? Would you? I tend to just go for the laminate effect line. I, I, I'm exactly the same. I'm in a new build at the moment, and that's what the developers went with as well. So we can't be doing things wrong if we're getting the same sort of stuff. Yeah, and I still think it's good, and 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 make sure it's not up to the kicker boards, but actually under the kicker boards. Um, and the kicker boards are if it's a newer kitchen, make sure they've got the seals on them, which actually bring it right down and seal off any water it can get under there. If not, maybe consider possibly putting a, a, a silicon seal round. Uh, Places it would get water, maybe around the yeah, yeah. sink area, not necessarily everybody else, but but um but probably around the sink area, which you could you could potentially get a water ingress if somebody spilt something and, and then it just goes right under. Soaks into the the wood chip, and that's your that's your kicker board ruined. That's a god eye, absolutely. And if you've got, uh, if you've got a kitchen which is suddenly gone out of date because they will do that with certain colours of kitchens, then you're goosed. You've had it. Gloss surfaces is another one that's quite important for some people because obviously uh, it's easy cleaned, mm -hmm. and uh, not too elaborate handles because elaborate handles can be a nightmare for cleaning as well. So yeah, yeah. it's convenience. What about bedrooms? About in terms of storage, um, what, you know, where would you think? Where would you be? Um, what what sort of things would you think? Would you would you actually provide high quality, um, full length wardrobes for a professional tenant? So for a professional tenant, they'd ideally be looking for something that's uh, like fitted wardrobes, mm -hmm. so that at the same time as being able to store clothes, it's 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 an area that's basically reserved for that specific yeah. purpose, uh, and obviously your your room dimensions will change. Accordingly, but well, yeah. classic places to have have freestanding wardrobes is in, is in between fireplaces that were there before, isn't it? Because you've always got these wee recesses in the corners. Absolutely, 
Yeah. So that's a that's a really good one. Um, so freestanding uh, as well. Um, uh, you, you're right about integrated wardrobes. It is a good thing, um, especially if you kind of define your room. I, I mean, if the, if the room is not definable, if it's definable straight away, in other words, there's only one place you can put your double bed. Um, yes. Uh, then, then probably putting an integrated wardrobe and in over one side is probably the right thing to do because you're not going to be able to change the bed to another another dimension in the room. So yep. it just gives it purpose straight away, and it does give people a lot of places to to store stuff. Um, if you're going to put um, racking and everything in as well, make sure you've got good good support. Classic, you know, because if you if you if your thing is long enough, then you put the eventually it'll just start to sag. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, just start the sag. So you've got to have a support in the middle. You can't just. Yeah, well, if, you have a frame, if it's framed properly, then it should be. Aye, okay. it should be okay. Yeah. Aye. Uh, so definitely. Also, if you less wear and tear from bulky furniture being carried in and out, um, if you provide things like that, because classic is if people start bringing in wardrobes in and out, um, then you're going to get things hit and dented and everything like that, and. And there's usually a bit of tension about who's caused that as well. Well, I wouldn't have caused that if I hadn't, if I was able to get everything, if it was, if it was there already. And it's like, well, but you've caused it. Um, so you could maybe avoid all that tension, can't it? Yeah, well, the thing is, if it's just a little dent, then that's not really easily fixed, maybe a bit of sort of, uh, I can't remember the name of the product, some plaster type thing, you just sort of use a, what looks like a pallet knife to go over the top and then paint over the top. Fine. Yeah. But when it comes and to knocking panels and doors and stuff like that, it's a bit, bit more tricky. It's not easy to make an effective repair. Mm -hmm. And then f probably finally for me with the with the um, storage, um, uh, the sliding doors is a great thing because eh? it obviously provides um, uh, for dressing as well. Um, I, the other thing, if you can't get that, is for me, is if you've got a spare space at the top of your stairway, you know how you usually have the stairway and it's got this big, massive space above it when you're coming from the, the, the upstairs yes. uh, to downstairs? Uh, stick a mirror on there because a mirror on there is perfect for people when they're going out to actually look and see rather than if you've not got anything in the in the bedroom or you've not got mirror wardrobes. So they don't have to have a freestanding mirror in the bedroom. They can just go straight out to there and actually just look and say, perfect. Um, so that's a wee top tip for me for, for the, the land and how to make use of that. Absolutely, I've got a few mirrors. Though after one of the properties I had was nothing but mirrors. <laughs> it was like a fun uh, house. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, hooks as well. Maybe hooks at the back of the door. Make sure they're properly fixed on. Don't do a half-hearted effort because they'll come out the wall. The roll plugs will look, you know, it'll just make, it'll just look horrible. Uh, and then you're going to have a big problem trying to get it all back in because all that all these roll plugs have come out before and actually damaged the wall itself. Yeah. So it's, it, the, the long-term investment is actually to do it. it. It's a classic example of do it right in the first time. Do it right first time round and you'll no need to do it again. And depending on weight, it's, it's not always the case that you need to drill stuff into walls anyway because mm -hmm. if it's just for frame, some framed pictures and stuff like that, you get these little, uh, they're like double-sided tape and one side's yeah. velcro and the other side's just uh, mm -hmm. blue, basically. So you just... Sort of, Bedroom up. doors, bedroom doors are classic as well to have the hangover things, you know, just to yeah. hang over and you can yeah. put all them on. But make sure as well that your door actually can accommodate it when you close it. Um, because there's a lot of times people put these hangover things and then do the door doesn't close properly because it's not got the gap above above to make that happen. So uh, um, for bedroom doors and bathrooms for towels and robes as well, and kitchens for aprons and tea towels, uh, and, and also by the front door for coats, you know, that's the yeah. sort of things to think about. Um, finally, outdoor space. They're looking for, I mean, professional tenants are really looking for large lawns where children can run up and down and around and build tents and wee houses and all the rest of it. They can get a bit of creativity in there. Um, they love stylish private and low maintenance patios, balconies and terraces. Um, um, and and what other things would you recommend for, for the balconies and the terraces? Like, you know, what would you, to, to, to give it some sort of decoration? Well, you could put out a uh... A, a table and a couple of chairs you know you can go there first thing in the morning as the sun yeah. rises and whatever get a cup of tea in the summer when it's still kind of warm first thing in the morning uh, a plant mm -hmm. a plant pot in to make it feel a bit more sort of natural proper outdoor lighting yeah yeah uh, what else room for a barbecue yes Aye, that, room that, for that. barbecue that's always the big thing when it comes to the summertime isn't it 
Um, yeah. So you actually create that room for the barbecue. Um, uh, what else could we think about? Just make sure that things are non-neglected. Easy care services for your decking and your paving and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of where I'm thinking in terms of that. Make sure the decking's cleaned because I, I tell you, you go from winter into summer and all that sap just sits there and it's slippy. And you know, yeah. the first day of rain, you you're over on your backside with your. Well, that's something really. That's <laughs> one of the things about duty of care, isn't it? You know, duty Absolutely. of care is actually to make sure that um, everything's safe within the house, and you've done everything possible to make sure that you know that is okay. Uh, and pouring water on your deck and just to test it beforehand is probably the best thing you could ever do. Yes. Uh, and if you have to put a non-slip surface on it, then you'll have to put a non-slip surface on it. Um, as well, if you've got any ballast rails around the deck in, make sure nobody leans on that and they don't fall off. Because <laughs> that's I've, I've seen that happen in some tenancies before where the, the person's actually just lent on the I've, I've even lent on my, the, one of them myself and almost fell into the garden when I've been viewed yep. before. <laughs> And I would say follow the recommended uh, guidance for uh, things like revarnishing and stuff. So a yeah. lot of people tend to use boat varnish because it lasts somewhere between five and ten years. So you're not having to do it year on year. Yeah. And then, so it's so it's also worth thinking about things for your tenants. How will they get outside? I mean, for singles and couples, it's not so important. But for sharers and access to outdoor space, should be a common area like a living room, kitchen, or hall. Um, and it's through someone's if it's through someone's bedroom, then that's no practical, is it? I, I, saw no. I just saw that recently. I, I, you know, in one of the houses. I mean, you know, we're going to get an offer on it anyway. But they do have they didn't they, they didn't want to keep going out the side door to get everything out. So then they just created another door straight out the back from the from their bedroom to the garden, right. um, okay. which isn't the ideal, but but um, but it's practical for them. Uh, and I've, I've got a funny feeling somebody will actually maybe use that as a dining room from now on with the access to the outside from there. So these are all things to think about um, uh, in, in terms of accessibility for tenants, and, and, and it could be, become a bone of contention. Um, so what's your what's your final final thoughts on this? Because we're wrapping up. That's an hour already, James. Yeah, absolutely. It's went quickly. So uh, best advice, the, the one thing that you would tell somebody to attract, for premium lettings to attract, how to attract higher than professionals to your tenancy? So it's all about first appearances, I think. So, you know, you have to have that curb appeal. There's a, nat a good natural flow in, inside the property and certainly a, a good kitchen with reasonably mid to high range appliances. Yeah. Uh, a bathroom, obviously. Perfect. A water bathroom. For me, it's, it's, again, I always say this, if you won't live in it yourself, then you're, you're, you're renting to the wrong, you're, you're doing the wrong thing. You shouldn't even be in that game. If that's the case, um, it's got to be something for me. It's the test, the litmus test for me every single time. Is if would I live in this house myself? And 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 if the answer to that is yes, then it's it's right because I know my standard and what I like. Um, and if if it's no, then I need to do something about that. It also, as well as if if you love the house that you've just rented or you're just doing or what you're doing, you know the tenants will love it as well. That's a, that's another good litmus test for it. If you if you don't if you don't love it, you'll never rent it to anybody. Um, that's the classic because you, you there's something wrong with it. So someone else will, will think exactly the same way as you do. And the thing is, when when you start getting tenants having a look around your property, don't be afraid to ask for feedback. Yeah, that's another uh, thing. Uh, okay, guys, that's it. That's thank you very much for your your time, James. Really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to say thank you to Kevin, Jeanette, Jav, Mark, Alan, uh, Heather, and um, for 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 commenting and uh, and taking time to interact with the show as well. It's 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 you guys that make this the the show. It is. That's really what it comes down to. Or we're just talking to ourselves. <laughs> that's the reality. And until next time, guys. Um, um, that's it. Um, until next time, catch us on the Monday Night Wealth Creation Show. James and I will be talking Wealth Creation Show Monday night at six thirty on my public profile page. So official Jim Parker, um, look that up. Um, but we will be doing the Wealth Creation Show. We will also be on our YouTube channel, my LinkedIn channel as well, and we'll stream it later on on some of the um, Five Properties channels as well. Okay, and that's us. Thanks very much for your time, James. Have a good weekend, and, everyone. Uh, bye bye for now. Have a good.